Peace to you, parishioners and friends of St Francis Xavier and St John the Evangelist, Frankston East Catholic Communities. Welcome to our Saturday Eucharist celebration on the Solemnity of All Saints. Today we commemorate the triumph of the merits of Christ in the lives of his disciples. These are our parents, brothers, sisters, friends and people of goodwill who have washed their clothes white in the blood of Jesus and are now resting eternally in the Kingdom of God. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions of all parishioners and friends of our parishes, the end of the pandemic, for all souls in purgatory, for the special intentions of Jordan, Connie Caddy and Greta Wardley, and for the repose of the souls of Matthew Dunn, Romolo Bingay, Albert Vickers, Marshall George and Alan Wardley. Please join in the opening hymn. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that kingdom is near to remove oppression and break down fear yes god's time is near god's time is near god's time is near god's time is near in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God and in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday all saints, on which we remember our forefathers, fathers in faith, our parents who have gone before us. We know many of them die in heaven and we are today celebrating their unsung prayers to them. They are heroic, heroic men and women who have suffered so much for the faith and are now enjoying in heaven. Uncanonized people ask the good Lord through their intercession that God will grant us whatever we ask in faith. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, the Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance 
of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ's Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw another angel rising where the sun rises, carrying the seal of the living God. He called in a powerful voice to the four angels, whose duty was to devastate land and sea. Wait before you do any damage on land or at sea or to the trees, until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard how many were, how many were sealed, 144,000 out of all the tribes of Israel. After that, I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. They shouted aloud, Victory to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels who were standing in a circle around the throne, surrounding the elders and the four animals, prostrated themselves before the throne and touched the ground with their foreheads, worshipping God with these words. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and strength to our God for ever and ever. Amen. One of the elders then spoke and asked me, Do you know who these people are dressed in white robes and where they have come from? I answered him, You can tell me, my Lord. Then he said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The second reading is from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are re already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Surely everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please welcome the gospel. Come to me, all you that labour and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel 
according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. My dear brothers and sisters, today we have gathered to thank God for his grace, for the opportunity given us to celebrate this all saints. For one day, we shall be called saints ourselves. That's why today, the church gives us the opportunity to celebrate our unsung heroes. The Feast of All Saints is a celebration in recognition of the efforts made by many faithful who are not officially canonized or beatified by the church. For all baptized Christians, who have died and are now with God in glory are considered saints. All Saints Day is intended to honor the memory of countless unknown and uncanonized saints who have no feast days like our forefathers, our brothers and sisters who have gone before us we know they are in heaven through the efforts they made when they were on earth. But they have, the church has not canonized them and they have no feast days for they are to remember them. Today is the day we remember all the saints. And also for many of us who have so many names that have no saint name, today we also celebrate our saints day. Today, we thank God for giving ordinary men and women a share in his holiness and heavenly glory as a reward for their faith. This feast is observed to teach us to honor the saints both by imitating their lives and by seeking their intercession for us before Christ, the only mediator between God and man. The church reminds us today that God's call for holiness is universal, that all of us are called to live in his love and to make his love real in the lives of those around us. Holiness 
is related to the word wholesomeness. We grow in holiness when we live wholesome lives of integrity, lives of truth, justice, charity, mercy, and compassion, sharing our blessings with others, especially those who are living on the margins. Contrary to the belief of one known Christian sect that only 144,000 people will be saved or enter into God's kingdom. Our first reading today gives us hope that there are enough rooms in God's kingdom for anyone that triumphs. So, all sense refers to the crowd so great that no one could count. They were individuals of all nations and races, of all peoples and languages. This reading portrays two important things. First, is that the part from the officially canonized, from a part from the officially canonized sense, there are many more that have lived heroic and vicious lives. They are unsung men and women. But God, the Creator and Father, recognizes their efforts and struggles. They are those who have watched their ropes in the blood of the Lamb and now sing victory, salvation, honor, and glory belongs to our God because he is love. The second is that it also shows that God's love is for all nations. Today's second reading reminds us of how much God loves us. All saints, the triumphant church, now enjoy the fullness of this love. We, the militant church, who are still living also, enjoy God's love. It is this same love that sustains us in our daily journey. However, when we triumph like them, we shall become totally transformed and share in the fullness of this love. St. John the Evangelist tells us, Brothers, now we are the children of God. But it has not been manifested what we shall look like at the end. We shall look like the glorified Christ and the saints. We shall share in the fullness of God's love. Today, our gospel reading gives us a perfect credential of all the saints that we honor today. They are the real blessed and happy. Each one of them falls into one or more of these categories. They were poor in spirit. They suffered and wept for the salvation of others. They hungered and thirsted for justice and the truth. In the process, they were greatly persecuted and bruised. In spite of all these, they were pure in their hearts, merciful to all, and worked for peace. While this matches the profile and the present reward of all saints, it also leaves us with great hope and promise. All saints we are mortal human beings like each one of us. They came, saw, struggled, and they conquered. The same grace that helped them is still available for us today. The good news 
is that if we run and endure the way they did, we shall enjoy the same profile and reward. The reasons why we should honor the saints. First, the saints put their trust in Christ and lived heroic lives of faith. And they are challenging us today. How faithful are we? Not only to the commandments of God or the commandments of Christ in the church, but faithful to each other. Faithful in our lives. Faithful in our whatever, however we do things, personal relationship with people. How we portray Christ to people around us. How ready are we to die for our faith? To sacrifice whatever that it entails in order to enter into the kingdom of God. Are we afraid of the world? With the grace God has given us as his militant saints, we face the world with courage, perseverance, hope, humility, with, with strong faith and confidence in God. That's why St. Paul asks us to serve and honor such whole, some noble souls who have struggled and are now enjoying the bliss of eternal happiness. In his epistle to the Corinthians, to Philip and to Timothy, he advises Christians to welcome, serve, and honor those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ. The saints enjoy heavenly bliss as a reward for their faith in Jesus. They deserve our veneration. Secondly, St. Paul tells us that the saints are our role models. They teach us by their lives that Christ is holy, that Christ's holy life of love, mercy, unconditional forgiveness can with the grace of God be lived by ordinary people from all walks of life and all the times. Thirdly, that the saints are our heavenly intercessors or mediators who intercede for us before Jesus, the only mediator between God and us. The saints are the instruments that God uses to work miracles at present. Just as he used the staff of Moses, the bones of prophet Elisha, the towel or the handkerchief of St. Paul, the shadow of Peter to work miracles. That God will use us to work miracles for people around. And the intercession of the saints that God's miracles will be for us. Do we remember to call them? Our baptism, baptismal saints? Our guiding angels? And those holy men and women who have gone before us? Even our parents who have gone before us? Do we remember to ask for their intercession? For we know they have they suffered for the faith and they will be in heaven. The church advises us today that we need to accept the challenge to become saints. Jesus exhausts us, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Like St. Augustine who asked, if he and she can become saint, what can't I? If St. Augustine, St. Teresa of Child Jesus, St. Mary MacKillop, and all the saints can become saints, what of us? We work for our sainthood from now, living heroic, holy, spotless, good, humble, simple, loving lives. We can all become saints by choosing well 
by doing good and avoiding evil, by choosing to follow Jesus Christ all the way to heaven, through the cross, to the glory. No cross, no crown. The church asks us today that we need to take the shortcuts practiced by three centurions. St. Teresa of Avila, who said, Recharge your spiritual batteries every day by prayer. Namely, by listening to God and talking to him through the scriptures. St. Teresa of, uh, of the child Jesus said, Convert every action into prayer by offering it to God for his glory and for the salvation of souls, and by doing God's will to the best of your ability, and God will take care of the rest. And St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa, said, Do ordinary things with great love. Do something beautiful for God. Your sainthood is on the way. Ask our good Lord to give us the grace and the strength to withstand the world with our strong faith, prayer life, lives of justice and the integrity of living as Christians, our sainthood is assured. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. We stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the saints, our sisters and brothers, walked the way of Jesus and now share God's endless glory. Through their intercession, we bring these petitions to the Father of all. that the saints who embraced poverty and lived with gentleness and mercy of heart show us how to be a poor church for the poor of today and lead the people of our own time to be humble, respectful and merciful in all their relationships. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the saints who were the makers of peace in their own time will challenge those who today create wars and those who act with violence to seek a new peace through dialogue and patience. Lord, hear us. 
Lord graciously hear us. That the saints who endured persecution and martyrdom will be a source of strength and hope for those who are persecuted today for their faith in Jesus. And challenge us all not to take our faith and freedom of religion for granted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our sick, Connie Caddy and Doris Patel. May they be comforted by those who love and cherish them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That Mary and all the saints who live in the glory of God will welcome into the heavenly home all who died in faith. Those who have died recently, Matthew Dunn. All the suffering souls in purgatory and those whose anniversaries occur at this time, Alan Wardley, Marshall George, Romolu Bingay and Albert Vickers. May they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pause and pray with our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, eternal glory is yours, and in the richness of your mercy, you have called the saints to live in that glory forever. May we continue our journey of faith and keep our eyes fixed on your promise of eternal life until it is achieved. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and good of all his holy church. Amen. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord. And grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, out with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For, from your, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to each setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessings, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessings and gave the chalice to the disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you are elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Blessed Joseph, her mother's spouse, with your 
blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, Lord. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who, have, who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, grant, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ. Who said to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy, 
and wonderful in all your saints. We implore your grace, so that coming to, perf to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, we sit a um, while for pastoral letter. Our pastor letter for this week. Dear parishioners, may the peace of Christ be with you. Happy All Saints Day. Thanks to all who have made their voices heard on the need for a clearer roadmap for reopening of churches from our Premier Daniel Andrews. Now, 10 people may worship inside the church and 20 people worship outside the church respectively. From the 8th of November midnight, 20 people will be allowed to worship inside the church and 50 people outside the church. Although the number allowed to worship in the churches is disproportionate to the number of patrons allowed in restaurants, it is, however, better than what we had before from the Premier. Since Melbourne weather fluctuates constantly, we shall be celebrating most of our Masses inside the church. The Mass times for this week are as follows. St Francis Saviour, Sundays, 6pm Sunday evening inside. 8.30, 10.30 a.m. inside, 4 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. outside. Weekdays at St Francis Xavier, Tuesday to Saturday, 9.15, Mass, 10 people inside, and Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday, 7 p.m., Mass, 10 people. At St John the Evangelist. Sunday, the 5 p.m. Saturday evening Mass, inside, of course, 10 people. And the 8.30 and 10 a.m. outside. Weekdays. Monday to Saturday, 9 o'clock, Mass, and or communion services inside. Please send an email to the parish office to book for Mass. Note that because we have a limited number allowed in each Mass, you may not get the day or time you request. Christina, the parish secretary, may offer you an alternative day or time. We recall that the month of November is a special month for remembering our loved ones who have gone before us. Special altars may be set up in the church to commemorate the month of the dead. Masses can be booked for the intention of the dead. Father Chinua has taken some breaks. He will be ministering again later in the week. Keep on reaching out to each other. Come regards, Father Chinua Okiki our parish priest. We thank you for joining us in this wonderful Eucharistic celebration. May God continue to bless you. I will continue to pray. Please stay safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. God bless you.